Reconciliation. Unless you do all your business in cash, or you're so wired into the new information economy that you do all your banking online, you likely get a bank statement each month for your checking account. So once a month, theoretically at least, you reconcile what's on the bank statement with what's in your checkbook. If you're like me, every now and then you'll be off by some amount. Perhaps you forgot an ATM withdrawal or one of those miscellaneous fees. Whatever the reason, when the numbers don't match up, you try to find the mistake. You attempt to bring the two bottom lines together. You attempt to reconcile them. Sometimes it's as easy as correcting a subtraction mistake. Other times it can be a long process. However, the goal is always the same. It's to have your checkbook and your bank statement agree. Reconciling your checkbook to your bank statement is nothing compared to the task of reconciling people with each other. In the latter part of Ephesians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul wrote about how Jesus brought Jews and Gentiles together. In his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus forged two very different groups of people into one new group, Christians. Jews and Gentiles were reconciled in Jesus and placed into a new creation, the church. Today, the dividing wall of hostility isn't so much between Jews and Gentiles as it is between different groups of believers. The message from Ephesians chapter 2 is that all Christians can be reconciled, united as one in Christ Jesus. Jesus said that unity as we love one another would mark us as his followers. All believers, one in Jesus Christ, Christians only. Now that's reconciliation from the heart.